Hi friends! November 1st is the 10 year anniversary of World Ballet Day and I've been staying up overnight for the last 9 years to watch this 24 hour live stream as it moves across the world. And if you've ever been curious about ballet or have had an interest in ballet, this is the event that will get you inspired and will get you really excited about ballet. I mean, I take the day off work, I prepare snacks, I get all set up on the couch, I pop open a bottle of champagne, I talk about it until I'm blue in the face. It's a really laid back way to get to know the professional ballet world. This is my favorite event of the year. So why is this event different than any of the other national days we have throughout the calendar, like International Best Friend Day or National Pancake Day? And to be fair, Pancakes are delicious. <laughs> but this event is different because it's not just a hashtag to use on Instagram, it's an actual event. It's a live stream that starts in Australia, goes to England, and then moves over to the US. There are plenty of companies in other countries, in other regions that join in as well. So it's a global live stream of ballet. It started in 2014 with the big five. This has morphed and changed over the years, and this year we have the big three. On the World Ballet Day website, they're calling them the principal companies. This is the first year that they're using this terminology, so we'll see if it sticks around. And these big three are part of the mainstream. Essentially, it means that you're getting the full World Ballet Day experience from them. So you'll have about three to four hours of live stream with that company. You'll have a full ballet class with bar and center. You'll have rehearsals, so probably two to four different shows that are either on stage at that time or will be on stage soon. You'll have behind the scenes interviews, usually with other dancers, choreographers, the artistic director, pianists. Sometimes you'll have interviews with other staff members. You'll get behind the scenes access to most likely the physiotherapy unit, the training unit. Sometimes we see the point shoe room or we'll have a discussion with the person who manages point shoes and often we'll go into the costume department. There's usually also a segment with the school associated with that company. So the Royal Ballet, for example, will have a segment with the Royal Ballet School. There's also probably a period where they'll discuss some of their outreach programs. There's kind of three levels of streaming for World Ballet Day. So level one, you have the big three or your principal companies. They'll have longer streams, more in depth. They'll show you class in full for sure. During that, they might pass the mic on to another regional company, but this is happening a little less and less nowadays. And you really end up staying with the, the Royal Ballet or with the Australian Ballet or with San Francisco Ballet for the full three to four hours. Then you have level two, and these are the streams that are officially part of World Ballet Day. So they're listed on the World Ballet Day website and they'll post live streams and videos of their own on their own channels. And this might happen at the same time as the live streams for the big three or can be a little bit before or after these live streams as well. These are considered guest companies for this year per the World Ballet Day website. Then you have level three, which is everyone else who's live streaming or posting videos and are kind of jumping on the World Ballet Day bandwagon. So they're not officially part of World Ballet Day because they're not listed on the World Ballet Day website, but World Ballet Day is meant to celebrate ballet across the world and so everyone is welcome to join. And this is a great way to get to know smaller companies, more regional companies, and get a glimpse of what different companies are putting on stage that year. This is what this can look like in practice. So say we're with one of the big three, the Australian Ballet. We're in the mainstream, it's three to four hours long. We might also have live streams going at the same time with Hong Kong Ballet, the National Ballet of Japan. We might have the Royal New Zealand Ballet. So there's a ton of streams that can be happening at the same time as the Australian Ballet's three to four hour time block. And this will be the second layer of streaming. So they're officially part of World Ballet Day, but they're not part of the main three. And you might even have at the same time, even smaller companies or companies that have pre-recorded 15 minutes, 30 minutes that are celebrating World Ballet Day and want to show what they're putting on stage that season. And this is where you'll have tier three. It's really, really fun to have a ton of companies around the world joining in on World Ballet Day, but it can feel very overwhelming to figure out 
where to go and when when you kind of want to watch everything and that's for a seasoned viewer I've been watching this for nine years so if this is your first year watching World Ballet Day I would recommend sticking with the big three a lot of these companies will leave the live streams up in full for 30 days after November 1st so you'll have time to go back and re-watch the live stream if you've missed anything so you don't have to worry. After the 30 day mark, they tend to replace this with a cut down edited version of the full live stream. So it's about an hour long and it's kind of like a highlight reel. I don't know how many people are going back to watch the hour long highlight reel. And personally, I would love if they just left the whole event up live on screen or at the very least left their full company classes on YouTube. I mean, we have proof of concept. The Royal Ballet's classes have been online for years, have millions of views. People love them. People love taking these classes. So I'd love to see more companies doing that because I think it really helps the viewer connect with the company to be able to take that class and to be able to find dancers in that class that they love. The one last tip here is most companies will post all of this on YouTube. You might have a few companies that post on Facebook. So just a heads up there. Okay, so why is this a big deal? Well, in 2014, World Ballet Day was the first time that audiences had a peek behind the curtain. So it was the first time that we got to see company class, that we got to see rehearsals, a lot of the dancers that we got to know up close, that we heard them speak in interviews, where we had video footage of places backstage. So studios, dressing rooms, training rooms, physiotherapy rooms, the point shoe rooms. It seems kind of unbelievable, but social media was nothing like it is now. So you didn't have that many dancers that were online. You didn't have that many companies that were online. You just didn't have that same level of access. And it felt like the audience was being allowed backstage and it was really novel and really exciting. And frankly, it's still really novel and really exciting. Okay, so what can you expect this year and what will you get out of it? So off the bat, company class. And you can expect a full class, so bar and center, for the big three. There might also be other companies specifically recording a company class and uploading it to YouTube for World Ballet Day. We've seen this from Birmingham Royal Ballet, we've seen this from Bavarian State Ballet, from the Dutch National Ballet, so I would expect more of the same this year. Company class is one of the most anticipated and loved parts of World Ballet Day, and for good reason. You're essentially watching the company in training, and for dancers in the audience, kids, teens, and adults alike, you have a real connection to the dancers during class because you've been there too. You've taken class. You get bar, you get center. It's physically in your body. So there's a really natural connection between the two. And for non-dancers watching World Ballet Day, I think it feels very approachable. World Ballet Day in general feels more laid back. It's a live stream, so you can watch it with your morning coffee, in your pajamas, on the bus on the way to work, really whenever you want. Along with classes, you'll get interviews, and this can be with the dancers, or it can be with other company staff members. So the artistic director, choreographers, physio, costume department, etc. The biggest portion of the day tends to be rehearsals, and companies will rehearse for shows that are either on stage, that they're performing right now, or that they will be performing in the next few months. So this will include running through the choreography and you'll have the dancers and then you'll have someone running the rehearsal. So you would have a choreographer or you would have a repetitor, ballet master, ballet mistress, just someone who's running the rehearsal. It's a really laid back way for the audience to get to see how a show comes to be on stage and what kind of corrections or what kind of guidance the dancers might get during rehearsals. The Royal Ballet does this really, really well because they have their insights rehearsals where not everything is on YouTube, but they do put a lot of their rehearsals on YouTube. And so you can watch the process of a rehearsal. And oftentimes you'll hear either reference to a certain step or reference to a certain point in the music. They might be explaining what's going on in the story. And so it's really a way for you to connect with the dancer, the choreographer, the company, and the show that's going to be on stage. Essentially, you've seen behind the curtain, which I think makes the magic or the being on stage just that much cooler. It's fantastic. The day is overall a great introduction to ballet if you're a new ballet watcher and just an open love letter to ballet if you're already ballet obsessed. If you're starting to get into ballet and learning the bigger ballet world, it's a great spot to start with a list of companies that you can deep dive into. So you can go through the list and see what shows they're performing, what dancers they have, and what kind of access they provide online and through social media. I am so excited for World Ballet Day this year on the first of November and I can't quite believe it's already 
celebrate the 10 year anniversary. I actually went back to the Royal Ballet's company class in 2014, so you can click on this video to watch that alongside me, or you can click on this playlist to watch all of my World Ballet Day videos. See you in the next one. Bye.